So I can see I've got a few live viewers already. That means you were here early. Thank you so much. We're actually uh, in one of the very VIP sort of off-limit sections of Paris, this beautiful space. Let me give you a quick look before they kick us out. This is the Ecole des Beaux-Arts. And I'm in this glorious, illuminated, skylit room that is part of the Ecole des Beaux-Arts, the Fine Arts University, the School of Fine Arts. And this is one of those special spaces that you can only see a few days per year. This weekend is the Journée du Patrimoine, the Heritage Days of Paris. And I was able to sneak in here just in time. And we're gonna try to enjoy as much of this as we can before they kick us out. It's just extraordinary. Normally this is just for the students of the university. We're in the 6th arrondissement, Saint-Germain-des-Prés. Bonjour, everybody. Thank you for joining me a little bit early on this one. If you're wondering why I started early, you can check the replay. I had to pull the trigger ahead of time on this one. The Ecole des Beaux-Arts, completely off limits to the public, except today and tomorrow. Let me tell you a little bit about this school. There are 70 of you live with me here. Hello, David. Hello, Trish. Hello, David Dubois. This is the Ecole des Beaux-Arts was, it still is actually the fine arts school of Paris and we really owe a lot to this institution. If Paris is as beautiful as it is today, it's because some of the, the most brilliant creative minds were actually trained here in this school as artists as early as the, the early 1800s, even before. So Versailles, the palace, had a famous painter called Charles Lebrun, Charles Lebrun, and he opened up a painting and sculpture school on this site in the 1600s. That eventually merged with an architecture school and it became the School of Fine Arts and it's still going strong. Now, the reason I say that we owe the beauty of Paris to a space like this is because the, the list of students, former students of this, of this place, pretty impressive roster. We're talking about uh, Louis David, we're talking about Edgar Degas, uh, Degas rather, we're talking about Delacroix. Delacroix was actually uh, rejected seven times from this school before he was able to get accepted. Can you imagine that? Delacroix, one of the greatest 19th century artists ever. Seven times he gets rejected before they allow him in here. This used to be a grand sort of gallery full of statuary, uh, Greek statues, Roman statues, copies of them as well to allow the students to study. So let's continue with this list. It wasn't just Delacroix and, and Degas. Uh, we're talking about Ingres. We're talking about Fragonard. We're talking about Charles Garnier, the great uh, architect of the Palais Garnier Opera, that opera house that we all love so much. Hi, Tina. I, can, I see Janet's name and Deborah Fior, Fiorino. That's fantastic. This is the Journée du Patrimoine, and they're going to kick us out of here at 5 o'clock or so. So we're, I'm just you can probably hear it in my voice. I'm a little bit frazzled and I really wanted to show this to you before we have to move on. And in fact, we're gonna take one last look at this beautiful skylit space of the Fine Arts Museum. And then I'm gonna to try to run, run, run to another spot before they make everybody leave. Over a hundred of you already, thank you so much. Let's get back to the, the history of this. Get this, as if that, that list of people I just gave you wasn't enough to show the genius coming out of this school. Uh, consider this. In 1862, a guy named Monet and a guy named Renoir were both students here, and they met each other and became friends. Can you imagine how that must have gone down? Like, Monet and Renoir meeting each other in this courtyard and saying, hey, what's up, I'm Monet, yeah, I'm, I'm Renoir. What do you do, I'm a painter. Oh, I'm a painter too. Yeah, let's hang out sometime, you know, after class. <laughs> it's just incredible. So we're in this courtyard of, of the Ecole. Let me show you the building that we were just in. Look at all the statuary around, man, it's fantastic. Now I'm very excited and I'm feeling very rushed, but I gotta remember as always, this is all about stopping to smell the roses. Again, this is a space that you normally cannot see. It's private, it's off limits. Only the students of the Ecole des Beaux-Arts are allowed to see this. And let me go show you the lovely garden. There used to be a convent here in the Middle Ages, a convent of a group called uh, this, the Saint Augustin. And the Saint Augustin, you had a, a convent and a church and a cloister. And I actually want to show you the cloister after I show you this courtyard here. We're in the sixth island, these small folks. I didn't even have time to, to write a title in the description of this one, but I will put it there after for the replay viewers. I think I'm going to call this one Creative Genius on the Left Bank. 
Let me show you what's through here. Again, off limits, except for this weekend, the Heritage Days in Paris, the Cours du Murier. Murier meaning a mulberry tree, mulberry bush. Let's just stop here before we even get there. I'm so excited, I'm trying to slow myself down here. They will kick, kick us out eventually, but not yet. Nice little frieze there, a sculpted relief. And let me show you the former medieval cloister of the convent that was once here. <laughs> There's a bit of scaffolding around the, the fountain. But it's a beautiful space, you know. Myself and all of you and, and our community here, we're always, of course, in search of the parts of Paris that, that you, people don't know about, the obscure, the hidden, the concealed, the romantic, the special, the poetic, and that's exactly what's going on here. You feel all of a sudden like you're in Rome or Florence. Look at that. Gorgeous. Ah, uh, Gidget says she, she loves the way that I describe details of a place. Thank you so much, Gidget. It's thinning out here. I think they're, they're trying to, to start asking people to leave. But arcades on all four sides of this former cloister. Ah, there's the guard who's telling people to, to take off. But let me give you a couple more compositions before. Look on the left. Look at these sculpted friezes on the left. Wow. Let's not miss those. On peut passer par là, monsieur, ou c'est... Oui, c'est bon, merci. Rosalind is here, from Down Under. Hello, Rosalind. So if you're just joining me, this is a special moment. I snuck in just in time to take advantage of the Journée du Patrimoine, the Heritage Days of Paris, where they open up select addresses that are the rest of the year closed to the public. And we're at the École des Beaux-Arts, the School of Fine Arts. Former place of study of great Impressionists, post-Impressionists, Matisse was a student here that I didn't mention before. Again, it, it's so cool that it bears repeating. If you just joined us, Monet met Renoir here. They were both students at this school. Ah, my wife's here and she says that my daughter Taya is watching. Hi, Taya. Let me show Taya my face. My old back home. Hi, Taya. Cuckoo. I'm talking to you, baby. Sometimes Taya sees me uh, live and she talks to the screen and she expects me to respond like it's a FaceTime or a Skype call, which we tend to do. But um, she's always a bit confused that daddy doesn't talk to her. So hi, Taya. Hi, baby. I hope you're having a good time with mommy and, and little baby sister Tess. I love you, Taya. I got to get back to work, honey. Bye bye. I'm in Paris. I'm going to bring you here very soon. We're in the courtyard, that's the building that we started out in. If you are just uh, arriving, as Marianne Borg is arriving, hello Marianne, uh, definitely check out the replay because you want to see what we just saw in that building. This weekend, 15th and 16th of uh, September, really special because you can see uh, off limits parts of Paris. Let me show you the church left over from the Saint Augustin. Nice slow pan. There are also remnants uh, throughout this courtyard in the gardens and whatnot from various buildings that didn't survive history, like the, fa the famed in uh, Tuileries Palace by the Louvre. There are little bits and pieces of that. It was, of course, torched in 1871, that building. And then other little bits of uh, various chateaus and castles. In fact, if I turn here, the main gate 
if I understand, is actually from an old chateau in France. So we could spend a little bit more time here, but as you see, they're kind of shuffling us all out here. This was supposed to be open only until five, so I started a little bit early today. One more look at the École des Beaux-Arts. Thank you to the school for producing Charles Gagné of the Opera House of Paris, Matisse, Renoir, Monet, David, Delacroix, Degas, Ingres, Fragonard. Come on, it's crazy. Good stuff, good stuff. Now let's see if we can manage to get out of here. And just down the street, we're going to talk about another creative genius. We can get through here. It's very packed. Everybody's out and enjoying the weather and enjoying the free access to all of these things. All right, here we go. We're on the Rue des Beaux-Arts now, the Street of the Fine Arts, which is a fine name for a street, I must say. Oh, someone just saw, I didn't see the name, sorry, but someone asked, why are places in, in Paris off limits? Well, on, a, on days like to, today, the heritage days, um, we're talking about banks, we're talking about the Hotel de Ville, uh, City Hall, we're talking about uh, old mansions that some people might actually live in, we're talking about uh, foreign embassies, and all these beautiful buildings that are gorgeous inside, but you can't really let the public um, have their way inside there on any given day. And uh, same, obviously, with the universities, which is why we got exclusive access there. I'm so glad I was able to show that with you, uh, to you, rather. So we're looking at the entrance of the École des Beaux-Arts, the fine arts school. And then right here at number 13 is a hotel called Hotel, or L'Hôtel. A hotel called L'Hôtel, with a very peculiar uh, sculpted head there of a ram. Now, this plaque here to the left at number 13 will remind us that the amazing Irish poet, playwright, novelist Oscar Wilde lived and died here, died a rather dramatic death. Oscar Wilde, when he was 12 years old, tragedy struck his family and his younger sister died. His nine-year-old sister died of uh, an illness. And the mom decided in order to distract Oscar and his brother from the pain of losing their sister, uh, she brought them to Paris. And it was the first time that Oscar had seen the city as a 12-year-old. And isn't that interesting? Imagine being a, a young boy who has lost his sister and ended the world. And then you're walking through Paris. Imagine what that must have been like. Paris was almost used as a tool by Wilde's mother to help him uh, deal with the pain. And he must have developed a very strong attraction or, or link to Paris because he would come back here very often during his, during his career. Now, if you don't already know, Oscar Wilde, he preferred the company of men. And in the 18, late 1800s, that news broke that he did. And uh, it, it ruined him, essentially. He was popped into prison for two years of hard labor, uh, convicted of gross indecency. But here at L'Hôtel, he, he grabbed a place in the 1890s, and he sadly died. Now, I actually already asked if I could film the interiors. They said no. So... Technically, I'm not going to film the lobby, but uh, I do want to give you just a quick little look. I'm never one to follow all of the rules. I go. So, yeah, he gave me a dirty look. That's the guy who said I couldn't film, and he just gave me the look like, hey, get out of here, buddy. So let me say before we leave, you can still rent room number 16 at this hotel called L'Hotel in Saint-Germain-des-Prés. And he had great turns of phrases. Um, uh, Oscar Wilde had great quotes. For example, uh, the only thing worse than being talked about is not being talked about. He also has a, had a beautiful quote that said, um, you love someone not for their looks, for their clothes, or for the fancy car they drive, but because they sing a song that only you can hear. How lovely is that? They sing a song that only you can hear. And then before he dies, in this room, very ornate wallpaper up in his room that I was lucky enough to see, he once famously said before he croaks, uh, this hideous wallpaper and I are fighting a duel to the death, either it goes or I do. I'm going to afterward pop a, a, a link to my blog that I did a few years ago when I was lucky enough to go inside of Oscar Wilde's room. So if you want to see what it looks like up in there, and you want to see that hideous wallpaper that he claimed essentially vanquished him in the end, um, Go check it out. You know, he ran up a bill there. They've got it framed on the wall. Uh, the equivalent of today, about 400 euros, which must have been quite a bit back then in 1900 when he passed away. And, you know, let me switch it on me here. Taya, I don't know if you're still watching, honey, but if you are, hello. Cuckoo again. Oscar Wilde had 
one of the most amazing quotes that I carry with me all the time. Excuse me. He said, we're all in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars. And if you let that sink in a minute, we're all in the gutter. Some of us choose to look at the stars and to ponder the stars. I think that's important for myself and, and those of you who really love Paris. I know a lot of you do. Paris is almost, it really is the stars, isn't it? Paris is the stars. It represents for a lot of us um, a better version of ourselves or just, you know, taking our lives just a little bit further than the norm or the average or what people generally um, sort of accept, right? And what, what they, what they, yeah, I think you know what I'm trying to say, right? So anyway, Paris is the stars. We're all in the gutter. Some of us are looking at Paris. All right, so we are going to head towards the river. Okay, so we're going to do another quick peek in a shop that we probably shouldn't film in, but I've just got to show you very, very quickly. So get ready. It won't last long. Pardon. Okay, so I just wanted to show you this real quick. Yeah, the ceilings. I'll explain this when we get outside. Okay, I'll just show you some of the products. Merci, au revoir. Okay, so I have those awkward moments so that you all don't have to. That's one of the points of this whole exercise. So that place, let me show you the name. Ooh, there's a lot of traffic here. I gotta watch myself on the street. Uh, do you see, let me show you this. There was a gentleman called Bully. Do you see that, B-U-L-Y? And Bully in 1803 opened up these beautiful perfume shops and beauty product boutiques. And he became very, very famous for it. Now his company kind of uh, went under for about, it vanished for about a hundred years, but there's a current company. They decided to actually bring it back. So they've got this, as you saw, the interiors are meticulously recreated to mimic a 19th century boutique of perfumes and various beauty products. It's called Bully. There's more than one in Paris. And uh, here it's just very, very charming what's going on. You feel like you're walking into an old um, pharmacist or something, like an old 19th century uh, beauty laboratory. And I like this, this idea of a company thrives for a hundred years or so and then it vanishes, but then it's uh, reborn. And as long as the uh, current company, you know, the modern owner, as long as they decide to follow, you know, sort of the old style and, and really try to render those details accurately, then it can be quite, quite charming. Look at these beauties. Pretty sure I photographed these before. Yeah, thanks, Missy Lamb, super fan Missy Lamb, mentions the word apothecary. That's right, that's what this looks like, an apothecary. Let me show you, we're across the street from it. It's uh, the number six Rue Bonaparte. Woo, it's busy here today, my goodness. I gotta back up enough to show you that this door with the snake uh, knockers, Edouard Manet. Manet is considered by many to have started Impressionism. So he was born there. Another creative genius. Oh, I gotta tell you, I am ready to find some quieter streets because I can barely move around here. There we go. Weaving through traffic. Ah, I'm so glad to see 233 of you here. Fantastic. Thanks so much for joining me. It's another rather warm day in September and everybody is out just like last Saturday. Does anyone else feel like these weeks are just flying by? It's crazy, isn't it? 
There's some nice sky there, some nice light, so let's pause for a minute. What we see are the bouquinistes, the, the very famous booksellers. All those green stalls, I mean, they used to sell along the bridges hundreds of years ago, but then they were kicked off the bridges. On the other side is the Louvre. All right, let's move on. I got a lot of stuff to show you. And again, in search of quieter spaces. Pardon, madame, excusez-moi. <laughs> Bonnie Turbeville says, oops, sorry about that. Bonnie Turbeville says, the whole year is flying by, Corey. I do agree with that. Especially with the little ones at home and our new house and all of that business. Whew. So what we've got here on the left, even though on the right-hand side I've got the Seine River, what we've got on the left is actually still where we started, that complex of the Ecole des Beaux-Arts, the School of Fine Arts. Hello, Dougie. Coucou, salut chien, salut chien, bonne journée, bon samedi. So the complex of the school used to be a bunch of old hotel particulier or old mansions and city dwellings. I don't know if you can make it out, but there was a, a famous French writer, journalist, poet called Anatole France or Anatole France. Interesting, his last name, or perhaps it was an adopted name that he used, but it was, he used the word France. Uh, so it says that he was born here and lived in this area. Lived in this area, actually, yeah, 1844 to 1853. He won a Nobel Prize in literature, Anatole France. So what I was saying is, this is the École des Beaux-Arts, and you can actually peek through another bit of the courtyard. Let me show you that. If we can focus, there we go. This one is closed even today because I think they're redoing the grass. But I want to give you a couple. We're going to peek through the, the gate. Anyone can do this on any day, by the way. You can always peek into this section. Again, these old mansions, these city mansions that we call hotels. And again, part of the school, part of the University of Fi the School of Fine Arts that the students are able to use. They've got plenty of inspiration all around with these beautiful statues, my goodness. Oh, Jasmine says she loves my French. Merci, Jasmine. And just because you deserve it. One last look this way as best I can. So yeah, we're on the Quai Malaquais, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, right along the Seine. So if you ever want to just catch a glimpse of that, a little bit of the fine art school, go ahead and check that out. Really obscure little plaque up here, if we're talking about creative genius. Frédéric Chopin's famous, some would say infamous uh, lover and partner, was Georges Sand. You probably can't read that plaque, but trust me, it says that here in this house is Georges Sand, the mistress slash uh, soulmate slash uh, frenemy of Frédéric Chopin lived here and wrote, wrote there. Again, the Louvre and the Bouquinist booksellers. We're going to head down the Rue des Saint-Pères. We're technically in the 7th arrondissement now. We're really straddling the, the border between the two. Uh, and something tells me a few of you viewers out there will appreciate this view. Right about there. So that's the name. I'm not even sure how you pronounce that name. I won't pretend to, to try. But that's quite lovely. So what we've got here are uh, antique stores. 
If you don't have time to go up to the flea markets, the Marché aux Puces in Paris, you can just walk around here on the Rue des Saint-Pères and the Rue Bonaparte. Let me cross over and give you an idea what's going on here. You're probably going to see some reflections, but... Uh, Essentially, just address after address of beautiful, creative, inspired pieces from long ago. So we'll do a little bit more window licking, as they say, as a Buddha. I know some of you previously have said, you know, Corey, stop every now and then to let us do some window shopping. So that's what we're partaking in here. That is a sort of faux Gauguin. It looks like a Gauguin painting, but I can see the name says otherwise. Still lovely. Can you make out that old bird cage there? I can so, yeah, sort of give you a view like that. Beautiful bird cage, complete with a bird inside. And then down, down low, let me show you what's going on here. Uh, like that. It's kind of cute. Ooh, who just had that a very astute comment? Let me scroll up and see who said that. Ah, Anna Tinsman. Anna Tinsman knows what's coming. Some beautiful uh, lions on a balcony coming up on the right-hand side. She said, don't forget the lions up there on the right. Well done, Anna. I got to give a shout out to Anna Tinsman. Anna was a freet before freets were even a thing. She's one of the original supporters and used to come and take a lot of tours and she still comes to Paris so many times that she herself has lost count. And Anna is awesome because she took me yesterday to the Ritz, the Ritz Hotel for afternoon tea and she footed the bill and everything and it was just absolutely spectacular. We did an exchange, I gave her a tour, free tour of Père Lachaise in the morning and then she treated me to afternoon tea at the Ritz. It was fantastic. There you go, Anna. Now, Anna's actually currently in Paris right now and she's so awesome and such a great supporter that she's somewhere right now in the city uh, watching this instead of exploring on her own. I love that, that's so nice, Anna. Look at these beauties. And again, it's a reminder that there used to be these hotels everywhere in this area. There was so much affluence. There still is today. So much money that these city homes, these mansions would be built by those who could afford it. All right, let's move on. Just in passing, here's a nice little detail where sometimes in Paris when they've got a blank wall, they add a bit of faux architecture. Just, uh, it's plastic essentially, I think, but isn't that a nice addition? It's better than looking at a blank wall. Just an extra little touch of class. Again, we're all in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars. I don't want to bother this gentleman over here. Sorry if I'm whipping the camera around, but look at that. We've got some, um, a local artist, a modern artist, selling his various things. I hope he's doing all right today. And then a different kind of art here, a different price range. I'll just give you the pan here. Again, if we can try to reduce the glare. Authentic Napoleon Bonaparte hat? I don't know, perhaps. Whoops, I'm always doinking off the window. <laughs> I'm sure the shop owner really appreciates that. <laughs> Oh boy, here we go, sorry. It's live video, what do you want from me? This is nice, isn't it? There's so much going on here. If you're into antiques at all, my goodness, smorgasbord. So I gotta keep my eyes peeled for that and make sure you don't miss too many of the good stuff or too much of the good stuff. And then I gotta go down the street. So I think, I haven't even titled this episode number 31, but I think I'm gonna call this one Creative Genius uh, in the Left Bank or on the Left Bank because we've got another one here. Even though he was certainly a controversial figure, how many of you who know Paris know this? This is the house, the former house of Serge Gainsbourg. If you anglicize it, we'd say Serge Gainsbourg. Moved in here in 1969. 
He was sort of part flower child from the 60s, part rock and roller from the 70s. He kind of blended it, but he was definitely a controversial guy. He um, lived here, moved here in 1969, and actually lived until his death. This was his home until 1991, but it has always been covered by fans who want to add graffiti and street art and messages for Serge. Now, he <laughs> wrote a number one hit that was so scandalous. It was called, I don't know if you've heard it before, it was called Je t'aime moi non plus. And you can YouTube it if you're interested. But it was a little bit too adult, shall we say. You'll know what I mean if you, if you hear it. And it was a number one record across Europe. And even in the UK, it was a number one record, but they banned it from UK radio because it was just a little bit too... Yeah, adult, if you know what I mean. And so uh, that, it never happened in the UK before. They had never banned a number one record from the radio. Even in, in France at that time, um, you couldn't play it on the radio after 11 p.m. for fear that uh, the wrong people would hear it. So that is the very unique, very colorful, very expressive former home of Serge Gainsbourg. All right. So many different layers to the city, as you know if you've been through here at all. Ah, Belinda Rivera remembers that song. It's basically just a bunch of je t'aime, je t'aime. And these breathy whispers, and then some other stuff too that we won't go into, but look at this beauty. Almost the opposite from the Gainsbourg house. Number 11, let me pan up here. We've got some nice sculpted details. This is just an apartment building now, from what I can gather. And it goes and goes and goes. And if you can make that out, it's actually set away from the street just enough that there isn't a real courtyard or anything in front of it, but somehow it just makes it feel more important. And it's got that lovely gate and the great doors. And that's just a place that I'd like to come home to every day. Let me try to practice again my backward walking skills so I can, so we don't have to say goodbye to it quite yet. Good stuff. Over here to the left, just some more attention to detail if you can see the carvings around that door. Just the colors here, look at the colors. Fantastic choices, well done. Well done, well done. Gidget Gidgey says, just simply gorgeous with a heart. I think that sums it up, sums it up for sure. So again, we started out in the 6th arrondissement, if anyone's wondering, and we moved quickly into the 7th, and that's where we'll spend the rest of our walk today. Patty is asking me if the owners of shops can paint the facade whatever they want. I would assume yes, within reason. I've definitely seen, you know, pink and red and bright yellow facades. So I, I guess, uh, but you know, I guess there's, there must be limits. There must be certain things that you, you couldn't do, uh, but I don't know. That's a nice door I wanted to show you obviously, because I did. <laughs> uh, over here, there's a, look at this, another beautiful entrance, look at this. Slow down, Corey, slow down. Wow. Just stunning. I'm also cropping out the green dumpsters on the street so we can enjoy this view even more thoroughly. 
What I will not crop out, though, is the plaque of Max Ernst here. Painter, sculptor, poet, another big name in Paris. Says he was, he was born in 1891 and lived in this house from 62 to his death. Janice asked me which street we're on right now. Janice, we are on the Rue de Lille. L-I-L-L-E. And I'm sorry if I... I'm making you look at the sky there. I'm trying to keep my head on a swivel today and really try to soak in as many of these details as we can. Yeah, the Rue de Lille. You'll notice it's just quieter here than where we started. You can't stay on those busy streets forever. More galleries, more antique stores around here. And let me pick up the pace a little bit because I've still got a few more fun things to show you. Keeping my eyes open. Here's a great gallery. Let me give you a quick look at this. Ah, Debbie Richardson says you are doing great. Thank you, Debbie. Now I feel reinvigorated, Debbie. Thank you for that. Oh, this is real fun. Let me show you this shop on the right that I've always liked. We're approaching the Rue de Beaune. Uh, what's the best way to show you? <clears throat> Through here, probably. It's uh, lamps and lighting, actually. If you can make the sound. Can you see that in there? It's quite pretty. So there are customers in there, otherwise I'd force the issue a little bit and show you some more of the shop. But again, I don't want to get some more stink eye from the, the owner or the manager in there. But let me back up at least into the street and give you a, a zoomed out view. It's called the Galerie des Lampes. It's pretty. I've always liked that. Here, now we can get closer. Those customers aren't in the window anymore. Hopefully that gives you enough of an idea what's going on in that store. There's a great eatery here that will cost you a bit of coin, but it's uh, beautiful inside, some great uh, turn of the century interiors. It's called, quite simply, Le Bistro de Paris. And the door, I don't know why, but it happens to be open. And even though it's not illuminated inside, hopefully we can make out enough of what's going on decor-wise. So it's got the feeling of those old, what we call a bouillon. A bouillon was a, a, a brasserie that was usually um, tailored to, toward sort of the average folks, you know, very convivial, sort of friendly atmosphere. There is still some great bouillon in Paris. You want to check out one called Chartier in the 9th arrondissement, and you want to check out one called Racine, the Bouillon Racine in the Latin Quarter. Okay, so look at this beauty. This is rather unexpected. This old gent's coming out of this doorway. Uh, it's a neo-Gothic facade and what appears to be a church tucked away at number 48. But I've been beyond that door, expecting a church, expecting a nave and a transept and an altar. But in fact, no, it's just uh, an apartment building inside. So I don't know if there's even any church left, to be honest. But isn't that lovely? Neo-Gothic. You know, in the mid 1800s, Europe and everywhere really went crazy for Gothic again. That had been gone for a long, long time. And they revived it. Even in New York, when I lived in Brooklyn, there were some beautiful 19th century neo-Gothic structures. And that's incidentally when they also uh, decided to save Notre Dame and restore the Cathedral of Notre Dame, just because there was such a renewed interest in the Gothic. Uh, eateries. We're getting very close to the Musée d'Orsay, over that way. If you are in the area of the Musée d'Orsay and you want to eat something that's not touristy crap, then go right down here. I don't think we're going to walk all the way down there, but just behind those people, it's called Coco Rico. So pop that one in your notebooks. I've eaten there. It's beautiful. 
Ah, you know what? We're almost there. Let's just take a peek inside. We've already gotten the stink eye from a couple of managers, so what's one more? Really pretty in the back, by the way. I don't know if we'll get all the way in the back, but it's gorgeous. And I really like this spot. Oh yeah, I think we're gonna... I think they might let us in the back because there's nobody there. Excusez-moi. Ah, uh, s'il y a personne, je peux filmer juste deux, deux secondes là pour... Merci, c'est gentil. Super. Merci. How adorable is this? It's 10 pounds. 10 pounds? <laughs> it's not 10 euros? 10 pounds. Ah, pounds. Ça, c'est plus cher. Encore plus cher. <laughs> Did you guys catch that? He said 10 pounds to come back here. I said not euros. He says euros aren't worth anything. So yeah, come back, come to the back of Coco Rico and look at this. This is the table you want, tucked away. How great is that? This is an enclosed space, by the way. So if you've got a, a party of six or eight, and they've got a, a nice menu, it's great for kids and families, the service is nice, people are friendly here. That's me. And that's Coco Rico. Uh, honestly, the proximity to the Musée d'Orsay, you'd expect the food around this area to not be very good, the atmosphere and whatnot. This place is great. Merci, monsieur. C'est très gentil. Merci, au revoir. Okay, well, it was worth walking over here. Let's continue. Let's get back on track. Oh, that wasn't in focus? Sorry, the, the, it was really dark in there. It looked uh, in focus on my screen. Sorry if it was not, but at least it gives you the idea. And then this one too, you want to remember this, just a little further south on the same road. It's called Les Antiquaires. Really beautiful uh, terrace. Bonjour. And uh, I will show you from across the street what that looks like. Looks like that. So Coco Rico and Les Antiquaires, two places that will not disappoint you in the seventh arrondissement. All right, what else did I want to show you? We're getting close to the end of our walk. I want to show you what might be the smallest florist shop ever. And then, okay, we got the signal. We're gonna cross over before we get to the florist. Let me show you this place. This is pretty fun. This is called Le Cabinet de Porcelaine, the Cabinet of Porcelain. And I'll show you first what's going on here. So you're like, oh, that's nice flowers and nuts and some cabbage. But then you get closer and you realize it's all in porcelain. Porcelain flowers, porcelain cabbage, Porcelain walnuts, chestnuts, more cabbage, and more flowers. That's pretty unique, isn't it? It's pretty fun. And across the way here is a bakery that some of you probably know called Eric Kaiser. You know, I gotta come clean about Eric Kaiser. I really don't think it's worth it. I think there are tons of other bakeries that are much better. It's perfectly fine in a pinch, but I don't find that anything really blows me away. I know some people swear by Eric Kaiser, but it's, you know, it's kind of a chain. It's, it's almost everywhere now. And I don't know, it's not really my style, if you want my honest opinion. Here's the florist. Let's try to find a composition here. Beautiful colors. Oh, 
Yeah, some of you are wondering what street I'm on. It's on the Rue, it's the Rue du Bac, BAC. Let me show you some more antique stores here before we hit the, the last leg. Let's see, again, the glare is tough. I guess all you're seeing is my phone, but I think you can make something out, right? If you use your imagination, I think you can make that out. These places look like period rooms, like museums in their own right. <laughs> try not to focus on the ubiquitous white van. <laughs> and try not to focus on the tour guide waving at you. Really nice light today. I don't know if you've noticed it. There's a nice um, warm and cool contrast going on today. We'll take it. All right, I got one last street to show you all. The Rue de l'Université. Why walk on the sidewalk when you can walk down the street? Those are some nice colors there. I'm happy with that. This is fun. This is a gallery. So again, a lot of galleries, a lot of antique shops. That's kind of cute, isn't it? Hey, D. Hubert's in the house. Hi, D. A couple things here halfway down the block. Look on the left. We've got some more leftovers of those beautiful old aristocratic homes. If you can clearly make out that this was not a middle class uh, average family home. Oh my goodness. Wow. Let's get a little bit more of that in there. There we go. Good stuff. And then over here, we've got a, a lovely lady called Stéphanie de Bruyne. That's about as well as I'm ever going to pronounce her name. Stéphanie de Bruyne. And it says uh, Parfum sur mesure, which means custom perfume. So I don't know if we can see anything in there at all. Not really. It's very dark inside. But you can see the flowers. She custom makes perfume. It costs a few thousand euros and it takes about three weeks, but she will make you exactly the perfume that you want and a perfume that is yours and yours alone. And while you're waiting three weeks for her to make it, you can admire this across the street. That's a nice view, let me show you this if there's not too much glare. I, I told you we do a lot of window shopping today. That's nice with the plant and everything, isn't it? Oh, I just saw a comment. Someone said that I should do a door tour. Yeah, absolutely. Frankly, I think every tour should be a door tour and a food tour and an art tour and an architecture tour. Here's a different view in this window. Seeing artichokes. I'm seeing cherubs. Sorry for the glare. I don't even know if this is working. There we go. That's better. As long as I stand across from the camera. That's not bad. There you go. And more artichokes. So there's a certain style here, right? I mean, it's a certain type of clientele. It's a certain aesthetic, I would say. But if you are, it, it, it's eye candy, that's for sure. If you just want to see pretty ornate stuff. Okay, we're almost wrapping things up here. Thank you so much for sticking around, 259 of you. It's fantastic. Okay, a couple of things. First, let me try to, I'm gonna get a little bit tricky here. There's a hidden garden right here. And what I gotta do is I gotta turn my rig this way. And then we're gonna enter, 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 eesh, just barely. And now, now we're inside and now I can show you what's going on. That's charming, isn't it? You see the bench there? A 
all these gorgeous spaces and a bit of ironwork up there in the corner. And is there anything? I can't even see what's to the left. I'm using my camera here to see what's over there. I'm discovering this along with you. Okay, there we go. There must be like 2,000 little spaces like this. And then I'm squeezing my equipment back through. There we go. I have a lady who's laughing at me. Well, I say I'm for rigolo. <laughs> Je suis passionné. Je suis très passion passionné. <laughs> oh, let me cross over here. Because this is fantastic. This is a spot. Kind of makes the whole tour worthwhile. We're at number 43 of this street. And uh, wow. Look at that. Look at this entrance. Incredible. Has anyone ever written a song about cobblestones? Because honestly, I'm about to. I'll show you all the way up top here, the beautiful Mansart, French style slate roofs. Man, so much to discover around here. It's fantastic, look at that. Coming to the end here, folks. Oh. Look at that light. Hello. <sighs> Come on. So psyched to have you all here. Look at that beauty up there. Just let me have my morning coffee right there. Come on. Right? <laughs> okay, there's one last spot we are going to see if it's open or not. If it is, that'll be great. If not, I'll say goodbye to y'all. Thanks for spending your Saturday with me. I do appreciate that, it's pretty fantastic. Ooh, the doors are open, so. Let's see what happens in here. I've always liked this courtyard. Okay, let's go nice and slow here. Look at that. What? This is a former, it's a hotel, or not really a hotel, it's, it's like a, an, event, an event space. And it's a former building called the, if I'm not mistaken, La Maison des Polytechniciens which is a bit of a mouthful. But the entrance is fantastic. Yeah, it does seem like this, this section actually is a hotel, plus an event space. So we, this is our last stop today. And this, I was really hoping this, hoping this would be open for us today. Let's just admire these views. This is ridiculous. This is called the, the Hotel de Poulpry. P-O-U-L-P-R-Y. Let me stand up on the stairs and show you what's going on here. Ah, uh, Avril says that my the tours make her Saturday. Thank you so much, Avril. Appreciate that. Now, if you want to know exactly where these spaces are, these courtyards, the little gardens, all the details, the historic, historical tidbits, what you want to do is check me out on patreon.com in the description of the replay here on Facebook. If you're new to this whole game, you will find a link to my Patreon site. If you become a member, if you support the project for a small donation per month, then you can get all kinds of rewards, and one of them is a PDF map of every episode that I do, so you know exactly what we saw on video. And you can build your own little Paris notebook and have your own little uh, guidebook, really, is, the, is the, the idea. I'm just trying to get to this side and we're gonna finish with this view here. Look at these tables, how cute is that? I think that's a composition that we can end on. So I wanna thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate the support, fantastic. 2018, definitely the most exciting time of my life. 
And thanks, everybody. Thank you for the hearts. Have a great weekend. And I will definitely be sharing content with you uh, this coming week. Bye-bye. Take care.